It's a terrific Thursday morning here on Whispering Hope. And you know, it's always a joy to study here with us on Whispering Hope. And so we're inviting wherever you are viewing us from to put in the chat where you're viewing us from so we can keep tabs and we can call you out and do a shout out to you to let you know that we're enjoying your presence here with us on Whispering Hope. We're also asking you to subscribe to subscribe and to like, and to get all of your friends and family members to study with us. Because together, we will grow as we study God's words. And in our midst today, we have Pastor Onisi Lefleur coming from the University of the Southern Caribbean, where he's the Vice President of Student Services, and he's also the Enrollment Manager. So he's a recruiting guy. So anybody on Whispering Hope, who's considering getting the education at the University of the Southern Caribbean down in Trinidad, link up with our pastor, Pastor Onisi Lefleur, and I'm sure he will give you some great advice to get you on your tertiary education. And so, Pastor Lefleur, we just want to welcome you as usual to Whispering Hope. And so we're going to ask you to pray. And then before we jump into our question, we have a viewer who has a pressing question. And you know, Pastor LaFleur, you're the man today who will answer pressing questions. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, we're grateful to see another morning. We're thankful that we can be up and breathe the fresh air. We are thankful to you that we can be looking into your words getting nuggets of encouragement to go along this life's journey. Guide us through this review of the lesson we pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. So, Pastor Lefleur, you're up for a question. Joy Charles wants to know, what about keeping a memorial every year to celebrate someone's death? Do you think that is a good idea? Or do you think that is pretty much enabling the belief in this immortality of the soul? What do you take on this, Pastor Lafleur? Most of the folks who I know keep such a service. They do border on the immortality of the soul. Because at the point of death the individual really knows nothing so there's nothing really to celebrate about the person being dead they are dead but the more you keep rehearsing and going over and celebrating as it were in quotes it does border on pandering a little too much to the doctrine of the immortality of the soul. Why? Because if I'm to celebrate with you, Sister Challenger, then you must be an active participant in this celebration. But when you're dead, you can't participate at all, okay. right? And Satan uses these little entrance points as means and measures to cement the notion that we are celebrating this one year, two years, three years, and the person is happy that we're celebrating it with them, for them. And so I generally advise folk that it might be a better use of salvific time to, to not become engaged in that, that activity because we don't promote the continuous living and legacy and living thoughts and living presence of the dead. We have a great celebration of life service called funeral. And the next thing the dead really await is Jesus is coming, not our continuous celebration of them. So I hope my answer placates Joy Charles's request. Well, again, on behalf of Joy Charles, thank you so very much, Pastor Lafleur. And this week, we're looking at the Old Testament hope. And so first, we're going to jump into our memory text for the week. And then we're going to get into Thursday's lesson. So let's look at our memory text, which comes from Hebrews 11, verse 17 and verse 19. And it says, By faith Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. 
he who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Hebrews 11, verse 17 and 19 from the New Revised Standard Version. Talk to us. What's your take on this text? This is a challenge of my take on this text. I have an interesting perspective. The Bible says, by faith, Abraham went put to the test. And this is not a test of getting into an academic classroom and writing a test. Mm -hmm. This was really an examination of Abraham's love for God and his promises. This is this text allowed me to, to realize that does Abraham love God and trust God more to fulfill his word than to keep his only son alive? Remember, um, Abraham's love for God when it was tested. Do you really love me, Abraham, to sacrifice your son? Even though I have said to you that this great nation will come out of, your, of, of this son. So for me, as I reflect on it, our faith in God really is a demonstration of our love for him and a trust on his words. Now, Abraham's love for God and his faith was not blind. It was based on how Abraham saw God work for him time and time. And for me, because of Abraham's experience with God, Abraham knew that God would keep his promise and he was willing to trust God to keep his promise rather than him again trying to help God to keep his promise. So if I'm to contemporize it, how much do I love God to trust him to do the things for me that seem humanly impossible? So for me, Sister Challenger, my days are busy. My diary pages are loaded with things to do. But God says to seek him first. And he will provide the hours of the day to get the things done. So it's our, this text allows me to reflect on our love for God. And we know that Abraham did receive Isaac just as God promised. May he help us to really love him. And you know, Pastor Lafleur, what stands out and jumps out at me is the fact that his faith didn't waver. He mm -hmm. loved God and trusted God so much that he had this faith that should Isaac die, that God has the resurrectory power to bring him back. And That's to right. me, that says a lot that he was not even afraid to lose his son because he believed that God had the power to raise him. And so we jump into Thursday's lesson. Interestingly, we're talking about those who sleep in the dust. And I really like this quarter so far when dealing with the state of the dead. And you know, as we will see, the New Testament talks a great deal about resurrection of the dead. And as we have already seen, this idea of resurrection of the dead appears in the Old Testament as well. And so somebody watching may be asking, and I'm asking you, Pastor Lafleur, what is the resurrection? What is this resurrection that we're talking about? What is this hope of the Old Testament and even this New Testament? What is the resurrection? First of all, the resurrection is the coming back to life of a dead person. Mm -hmm. Dead, completely knocked out, thoughts perish, and then the breath of life returning to that body as Jesus did for Lazarus and others. The resurrection has to do with the coming back to life of the dead body, the bread of life being infused in a dead soul. But this specific 
resurrection that the Bible promise gives to us is the resurrection that even though we suffer the natural consequences of sin and we die at the coming of Jesus, we will come back to life. God will infuse his breath of life back into our beings and we will live again. So simply put, it is the living again or the coming back to life when Jesus comes of those who die in the Lord. Those who would be resurrected and live eternally are those who die in the Lord. Those who will resurrect and die are those and die again are those who do not die in the Lord. So the hope is this. Even though death takes our loved ones away, even though death will take me away, I have the certain hope Amen. that Jesus, not, not a playful hope now, a very certain hope that Jesus will come and life would be infused back into me and I will live again and this time live eternally. And that is what will make salvation sweet. When we see people who suffered from all sorts of diseases, but held on to God, come back to life. Allow me to share one more thing, Sister Challenger. You know, this resurrection hope should be a guiding light for those of us who are alive now and who have relatives and friends who died before. The fact that we will see them again and could see them again eternally should cause us to live right. I want to see my sister again and live with her, even though death took her away. So that hope should cause me to want to live and walk and be in harmony with the will of God. Amen. So for our study, we would have looked at Daniel 12, and it talks about resurrection. And hope is found here. So what is this resurrection hope, Pastor Lafleur, that is found in the writings of this great prophet that is found in Daniel chapter 12? Talk to me. So Daniel 12 as I read this chapter, I never realized that this hope was etched in this biblical Old Testament masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Daniel 12 says, And at the time Michael shall stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of the people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book and this is the hope and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some mm -hmm. to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting content so the resurrection hope that is found in the writings of this great prophet is that there is coming a time in earth's history when jesus christ will stand up and put in his appearance against satan and against the evils of this world and come and almost says it is enough for god's people to bear put in his appearance and at that time, Daniel is saying to us that those who sleep in the dust, who are, who are dead, when Jesus stands up and puts in his appearance, they will be awakened. So the hope is simply this, at the coming of Jesus, when as symbolically referred to as Michael, at the coming of Jesus, the righteous dead will awake. But, you know, many of the Bible commentators suggest that those who awake at that time 
to everlasting shame and contempt are those who pierced the side of Jesus. And that will be a partial resurrection. Mrs. White seems to really substantiate and support this biblical point that at the time when Jesus puts in his appearance, some will wake up just to see him coming in his brilliance. And those are the ones who would have pierced the side of our Lord and bruised his back and treated him as a common criminal. But they will now be able to see him coming in his regal role and splendor. When Jesus stands up, resurrection would come. So let me ask you this question, Pastor LaFleur. I like where you're going. So those who pierced him, those who were extremely cruel and wicked to him, when he comes in the sky, they are going to see him. So I'm asking, will they see him and then fall back down dead? Yes. What's your take? Yes. His brightness, is it going His to continue? Brightness. Because, you know, sin cannot dwell in the presence of a holy God. That's right. His so, brightness so alone. Us, so well, right there. Yes. Yeah. His the brightness of holiness and and righteousness, his Shekinah glory, they, they will not be able to withstand it because they will not be, they did not die in a state of readiness or their lives were not in harmony with God's will. So they can't stand the sight of this holy God coming again. And that will be the fate of those who are living as well, who are not in a state of readiness. Man, they will fall back down dead. It was just for them to get a glimpse of his splendor and the splendor of his righteousness. The righteousness of his splendor will cause them to fall back dead. As was well the lesson writer says, many view this verse to be talking about a special resurrection of certain people, both faithful and unfaithful at Christ's return. May we be found on the side of the faithful. Amen. You know, pastor, some people have, some people have argued that there's good reason to hope in the resurrection. But is it possible to bring life to someone who died hundreds or thousands of years ago what about that person who was cremated because my brother he was cremated so how is it possible for life to be given again to somebody who would have died hundreds or thousands of years ago or even somebody in front of us we're just seeing ashes talk to us enlighten us about the possibility of such occurrence Let's go back to Genesis, when man was created. Man was created by the power of God from dust. And he became a living soul after the breath was breathed into his nostrils. Similarly, at the time of what I call recreation, because people died thousands of years their bones may have been disintegrated. The ashes okay. would have been yeah. spread all over the place. But God, in his might and in his recreative power, at his command, all those will come together again. And he will infuse the, the breath of life into their beings and they will rise up whole and corporeal as though they have bodies. You see, I've become settled as a challenger. After a little girl asked me a question once, along the similar lines, after we scattered the ashes of her grandmother, she said to me, now that granny has been thrown into the river, she's gone, she can't come back. And I said to myself, Satan may want us to believe that it is impossible for God to pull all the matter that composed Onesi Lafleur's body together again. But it would be like a replay of creation. Who would have thought 
that he could have done what he did. Just this time, he just does not have to go and physically form it. He just has to call it into being and out in his pro the prerogative of his own divine will and wisdom. Every righteous saint will come together again. The bread of life would be infused in their body. It would be as though they were awakened from deep sleep and they will come together, praising him and saying, this is our God. We have waited for him. Amen. You know, we, we touched this question before, but I'm going to ask it again. I'm going to ask you to pull out the scriptural references because, you know, somebody may be watching or viewing here on Whispering Hope and here we're talking about, you know, the people who pierced Jesus, the people who were so cruel to him, who whipped him with the cat and eye, who spat in his face and we can go down all the atrocities that was done to the sovereign of this universe, right? So, Pastor Lafleur, what are the scriptural evidence that supports that these people will be resurrected to see Jesus coming in all his glory and his pomp and circumstances? He regaled in his royal diadem and crowns on his head. What scriptural evidence do you have to support that they are going to be resurrected to see the coming King and Lord of Lords? If we look at Revelation 1 7, Sister Challenger, Revelation 1 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, mm -hmm. and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. So Revelation makes it clear that at his coming, the eyes of those who pierced him will see him. Uh -huh. And we can trust this living word of God that says that they will see all those who mocked him and, 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 and mocked his dying agonies and pains will be able to see him. And Daniel makes the point, Daniel 12, 2, that tells us who, how they will arise. They will arise to shame and everlasting contempt. Mm -hmm. All those who violently opposed our Lord, according to Revelation 1-7, will be the ones who will see him in his glory. Amen. Well, Pastor Lefleur, I'm really, really appreciating just the way you were able to bring it to us. Yes, we have looked at the state of the dead before, but I think this time around, just the way how it is being coupled and the way it's being expounded, you know, kind of help us. Because even some of us as Adventists, some of the Adventists, we fall in the trap and saying, even when we go to our funerals, that I don't know if it's cliche, they're in a better place. And, you know, so I'm so yeah. happy for this study. You know that we can all be strengthened as it relates to the state of the dead. And so So my final question to you, and I guess it's personal, how can I, how can we make the hope of resurrection a reality in my life? So I'm going to spin it to you, Pastor Lafleur. How can you make the hope of resurrection a reality in your life? Talking to everybody here. By living every day with a heartfelt commitment to forsake all known sins through the power of jesus so that if i die i know i'll be resurrected by reading god's words being disciplined about reading god's words so that i will understand the might and power and the promises of this god who has promised 
to resurrect me and take care of the various issues by developing a disciplined prayer life. Because a little talk with Jesus still makes every difficulty that we face right. And how do I make the hope real for me? I want to tell everybody about this hope, man. So that others, so that if we all are able to hold to this hope, then we all will be able, by God's grace, to encourage each other that even though death takes our loved ones away, or even though we die, if we die in Christ, we can be able to face and see him again as a smiling savior and not as a frowning judge. Amen. I want to thank you so very much, Pastor Lefleur. And so I want to talk to all our viewers in Whispering Hope. Should you get that diagnosis from the doctor that you have a few weeks to live, what would be your response? Agreed, it may be unwelcome news, but I'm here to let you know that if you place your hand in the Lord Jesus Christ, death is but a sleep. It's like going to bed tonight and the next voice that you will hear is God's wonderful word calling you from your sleep, waking you up from that mossy old grave. However, though, it's not automatic. You must make a decision to follow him. Man. The question is, how are you standing? If you're not on firm footing with Christ, I said to you even now, Turn your life over to him. He says, come just as you are. He says, it doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been. His love for you is stronger than death. Why do I say this? His son, his only son, took my place and your place just to give you eternal life. And all he asks for you is a willing heart, a heart that surrenders to God. Have a great day, everybody, and whispering hope. See you tomorrow, and God bless.